lanzamiento de balón y el arco iris de Darius Garland, su cuarto triple de la noche. Welcome to the Wine and Gold Show, presented by Bedway. Thank you for joining us on Valley Sports Ohio. Now, here are your hosts, John Michael and Rafa Hernandez Brito. Coming to you from inside Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, this is the Wine and Gold Show, presented by Betway. This is our holiday edition. Yeah. Welcome aboard. And the Cavaliers have been the holiday gift that just keeps they on giving. They just keep on giving. That's exactly what, what that's exactly right. And you can name a player, and we can talk forever for the whole show <laughs> about what an amazing season that player is having. And, and I think the fact that we now have a starting lineup, and, and this is the thing that I said last night. The fact that the things that we cannot control are going our way, including health, I think is something that has shown tremendously on the, on the understandings and obviously on the result that the Cavaliers have had. But then again, the unit, the team that JB has built, the fact that everybody has bought into the roles, I think is the key word here. It, it's just incredible. The attitude, the chemistry has been terrific. The team play. You know, and you mentioned the injuries. The injuries are, are working out for the Cavs in mid-December, right? But they were not earlier in the season. You know, health and safety protocols, of course, Colin Sexton has been lost for the season. So it's not as if the Cavs had an easy road through the first, you know, what, 15, 20 games. And when we looked at the schedule, when the schedule came out, we said, my goodness, you know, this is going to be a test for the Cavs. Most of the games on the road, 19 of the first 25 games against teams that made the playoffs last season. That number goes up to 22 <laughs> if you count teams that qualified for the play-in tournament. And the Cavs come out on the other side, 17 and 12 midway through December. And really, that's, that's better than I think you could have asked for at the beginning of the season. Way better. And I always hated this statement, but now, especially what we went through the last couple of years, if the season ended tonight, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Cavs will be playing at home in the first round because the victory against the Heat moved them up to fourth place in the standing. But then, you know, you mentioned the, the injuries. To me, everything started, John with that amazing road trip that we had going out west, even though that's when this, the injury started because Kevin Love missed the last game against Charlotte, but the winning record in that five-game road trip is what really made everybody believe, not only outside of the stands, but in the team. I think that's when they bought, they already bought into what JB had told them all along. But I think that's when they realized that they had something special here, that they could build something special. A question when a team has a quick start is, is this sustainable? Yeah. You know, this gets asked all the time in the NBA. And when you look at the traits of what the Cavs have exhibited thus far, balanced scoring on the offensive end, the only team in the NBA that can boast eight players averaging double figures. It's really phenomenal when you <laughs> think about it. Eight players averaging double figures, but on the other side of the ball, a defense that last season was bottom five, bottom six in terms of rating has been top five for the last few weeks. And it's been, I mean, you want to talk about the backbone of this team once again in that Miami game to make it four in a row, eight of the last 10 victories for the Cavs. They hold the heat under 100 once more. And we've seen this time and time and time again. It's been the defense that's the driving force for this basketball team. The, the defense feeds the Cavs offense. The defense feeds the energy. The defense feeds everything. And I think we saw it against the Heat. When Jared Allen appeared on the court in the second quarter, it was a little moment when he scored 10 points, I think, in the, in the second quarter, and it just everything exploded. But then again, you mentioned about the, the, the guys diverging in double figures. We also one of three teams at the moment of this taping that have at least one 20-point scorer in, in every game of the yep. season. The other two... Brooklyn and Golden State, Golden State one or two, depending on which that which night you're looking at the standings, but both teams leading the conferences, and then the Cavs right there. Yeah, and that's through 29 games, yeah. as you mentioned. Throw on top of that, the Cavs in all 29 games have had four players in double figures and three starters in double figures in all 29. <laughs> so again, balance score. What do you do if you're an opposing team? How do you game plan against this Cavs team? Because there isn't that player or players who you say, we stop this guy, we win the game. It hasn't been the case. I mean, Darius Garland playing at a very high level, Jared Allen at an all-star level, and, and you can make that argument for Darius Garland yeah. as well at this juncture of the season. And you know, but you know, if you focus on those two guys, Cavs have plenty of other guys who will beat you. And the, the amazing thing, also, John, we've seen it lately. And JB said that when everybody starts preparing for yourself, 
that's when you're getting the respect, when they have to uh, adjust. And we have seen teams actually change their starting lineup to see if they can actually combat the jumbo lineup that the Cavs discovered at the beginning of the season and then have, have really worked out and done wonders for us. And I think that's the biggest key, the fact that now they, we have teams coming into Cleveland or, hold, or, or hosting us in their home and having to figure out what they're going to do to begin the game, forget about right. adjustments that, you know, along the way. The, to start, they have to figure something out, to do something that they don't usually do. We saw Alvin Gentry of the Kings do mm -hmm. that. He swapped out 6'4", Terrence Davis, put in 6'11", Marvin Bagley. The result, the Cavs scored 81 points in the yeah. first half. Wow. I mean, you know, it's some unbelievable things going on here. And when you're making that other team adjust and adjust first, you know you're doing some good things. We, we have a wonderful show, first half of the show. One of our favorites. One of everybody's the best. Favorites. One of everybody's <laughs> favorites. Mr. Cavalier. Yes. Austin Carr will be joining us. Second half of the show, the manager of community relations for the Cavs, Lucy Veris. It's that time of giving. And the Cavs, you know, a part of this organization, the backbone of this organization is giving to others here in Northeast Ohio. Lucy's going to be here to talk about some of those things that have taken place and will continue to take place through the holiday season. Always special. One of the best humans in the organization. I was sad we lost her from the computer team, but when <laughs> I found out he, she was going to the community relations department, I knew the city of Cleveland and Northeast Ohio was going to be doing better, and, and, and she'll tell us why. Lucy in the second half. Austin Carr in the first half. AC straight ahead right here on the Wine and Gold Show presented by Betway. Coming to you from the depths of Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, this is the Wine and Gold Show presented by Betway, and look who it is. They figured we don't see each other enough throughout the course yeah. of the season, so they thought, they thought we'd bring you in. It is Mr. Cavalier. Austin Senor Clark. Cavalier. Always good to be with you guys. Good to have you on the show. AC, this has been a special start to the season yeah. for this Cavalier team. I'm going to start here. You were part of, the, of course, the Miracle of Richfield team that mm -hmm. made so many people in this area fall in love not only with the Cavaliers, but also with the NBA. Mm -hmm. And you've said a number of times throughout the course of this season that this current Cavs team reminds you of that miracle team. In yes. what ways? Well, first of all, they genuinely seem to like each other. And that really, and, and, and regardless of how much you try to hide body language, if you don't like a guy, <laughs> it shows up. <laughs> you know? So you can tell they all like each other. And that's one other thing. Now, They've kind of bought into we don't have to have a guy scoring 30 points mm -hmm. a night to win. We can all do it together and win. And that is what we became, where we had – we were getting 30 to 40 points off the bench. We were getting 50, at least 50 or more from the starters. And the, the, the one thing this team has that we didn't have, they got they get a 20-point score every night. Mm -hmm. and, and we never got to that. I mean, we got it, but not on a consistent not basis. Not on a consistent basis. But we would still win because we played defense. At what point did you start to believe? At what point oh. throughout the course of that season mm -hmm. did you look around that locker room and say, we really have something special here? Yeah, it, it took us about, about right around All-Star game mm -hmm. because – what happens is when you start out like the Cavs start out, and we start out the same way at the bottom, and then all of a sudden you start beating teams, you start getting to the top where teams that you used to always look up to, you're starting to be them now. <laughs> and it takes mentally, it takes a minute to get yourself. <laughs> right. That that's us. <laughs> you know. And once you get mentally in that frame of mind, now your confidence level goes up. Mm -hmm. And, and you've just played, you seem to just play, we just played tougher and tougher every night to the point where we could be down 20 and we still felt we could beat you. Senor Cavalier, you've done it all. You were the number one pick for the Cavs. You did everything that mm -hmm. was to be done at, at the college level. You were part of uh, one of the most historic moments, not only for the Cavs, but in the NBA. But still, I would imagine that to this day, every night you sit there next to John, <laughs> There's something that you got to really enjoy about what, we, what we're watching here at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Is there something that sticks up for, for you of what this team is doing on the court or off the court that you, you, even you mm -hmm. say, man, that, that's, that's really good? Yeah, well, what it is is how we are going against the grain. You know, this is a, a league of all small ball situations. <laughs> and we are going 
a bold move into into tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever that uh, Captain Kirk used to say. Yeah. <laughs> we got it. Yeah, we got it. We got it. Yeah. But I mean, it, it, it's like we're doing things that, you know, and, and the only team that really scares me is Golden State because they play in space and, and, and they, but we have mobile bigs. We just have, what we have to get used to doing is doing what we do best as opposed to trying to keep up with other teams and what they do. Because once we learn how to use what we're starting to do, our bigs better because they pass well, high, low passing, unbelievable. You know, it, it really puts the situation down to instead of us chasing Golden State, we make Golden State chase us. And that's going to be interesting how that all turns out. But all the other teams, I don't see the Cavs having – They'd be competitive with all of them. There's a distinction to be drawn here. You know, when when the NBA, you know, it's trending towards small ball. What it's right. trending toward is is skilled ball. Yes. Right? There's a distinction, right. right? If you're playing, if you play with skill, right. oftentimes those guys are smaller players. However, if you have big players that are skilled and can do <laughs> the things that the Cavs starting three, four, and five have done, you'd prefer a big guy over a shorter guy, right? I mean, you it's that simple, it. right? Yeah. I mean, to me. A big skill guy is just as important as a little skill guy. Matter even more when you get the closer to the basket, mm -hmm. it becomes better. If you look at now too, the way our bigs are handling, they cover each other. Like they come off the pick and roll, and they and, and, and the big stops stops the penetration. Now once he stops that penetration, this guy from the weak side is starting to slide in the position here. And now if they get by him, look what they have to deal with. You know, and and well, if you notice, when they get by one of our bigs, it's still a contested shot. Mm -hmm. It's not a wide open. They can't beat them to the basket where they get wide open shots. Then when they get there, there's another seven footer waiting to defend them. So it's really starting to become uh, a joy to watch now. I mean, and and I, it just takes a minute mentally for the team to realize who they are. You know, and and that they are as good as their their record shows. You know, you you said. <clears throat> jokingly, I guess, about, you know, about looking into the future. But I would imagine seven-footers right now in kids in high school or in college are, are looking <laughs> at what the Cavs are doing, and there is a big future for them, especially if you're skilled. For so long, we saw the seven-footers that shot the three. Mm -hmm. Then Durant came in, and he kind of changed everything. But now we have two guys, like Mark and Anna Mobley, that can actually put it on the floor, drive okay. to the basket. And also, like you said, protect the rim. So that gotta be good for all the young kids in college. The, you know, the seven footers that oh. actually. Yeah. Well, you know what it's gonna do? It's gonna make them be, try to develop their skills, because to me, now if you're six eleven, six ten, seven foot now, and you have skills, you have a place in this league. And uh, and that to me is where. And you don't have to be a Durant at seven foot. You don't have to be that that type of player, but you can do what we are doing. Multiple things. In multiple things, and I mean, because because really, Mobley is just he's just a pleasure to watch play the game because he doesn't he's not a fancy guy. He's just a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> he's just constantly doing what he does on a nightly basis. But then I don't know where he'll come up with a very fancy move, yeah, like those yeah. spin spin moves in the paint, the floater. Right. The, the, it's oh. like oh. Catching the ball on the deep. When he took that ball from uh, Levine, Levine, Levine yeah. I, I I didn't know what to say. I was like, <laughs> I, 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 I. <laughs> and, and Levine stood there like Le Levine didn't either. What just happened? He didn't know what to say <laughs> he didn't either. Know what to say either. I mean, nobody's ever took the ball right. from me. <laughs> I mean, again, you talk about being able to do multiple things for a big. Let's not forget that Evan Mobley, on the defensive end of the floor, has displayed skills of a you know a seasoned veteran. Yeah, right. I mean, this guy does things that kids just don't do coming out of school. And we talk about the, the touch on the defensive end. He's able to keep block shots in bounds, which is huge for being able to go the other way and work in transition. But he doesn't foul. Right. I mean, this right. guy, usually kids come out of college trying to play defense, and they're fouling right. all over the place. What is it? about this young man that makes him have that touch, if you will, he's, on the he's defensive end. He's good at event. controlling his body when he goes to block a shot. Mm -hmm. If you notice, he's never out of balance. Right. He's always blocking the where he has his body, legs under him, and he's, he's up this way. I mean, it's amazing how many shots he contests, though. Yeah. For leads every league. shot. He leads every, the league. Right, right. I mean, and he does it, like, multiple times. He's like, I mean, imagine – as he goes through his rookie year, man, 
next year he's going to be unbelievable because he'll be familiar with the surroundings. I mean, now I see how his school got to the situation they mm -hmm. got into because if you got him every night doing his thing, especially in the college level, you, he's going to be the best player on the floor. But I think you still, at this point, you have to give a ton of credit to J.B. Bickerstaff and his staff for putting oh, yeah. him in that position because I think he's benefited immensely also from the jumbo lineup because if he yeah. needs help from somebody, right. he's marketing and Allen right. that, are, that are giving right. him the help or he's doing the other way around. And speaking of J.B. Bickerstaff and the comparison between right. between the Miracle of Richfield and, mm -hmm. and these Cavaliers, which still has no name, we got to come up with a name for the Cavaliers. We will after the All-Star break. Let's get them to the yeah, All-Star okay. break. Now, my question <laughs> is, do the players back with the Miracle of Richfield like Bill Fitch as much as the kids like J.B. Bickerstaff? No, I don't think it was the same. <laughs> it was, it was a, it the was relationship was a little yeah. different. <laughs> the relationship was a little different. Yeah. <laughs> because Coach Fitch was more of an average. He, 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 was, he was always... He always thought he had to keep on you, press, mm -hmm. press, press, to get the best out of you. Whereas JB does it the opposite. He presses you, but he presses you here. Mm -hmm. And so it's a different feeling, you know? And and, and so because this is, Fitch would be like, <laughs> man, yeah. he, you know, and, and you kind of did it out of uh, yeah. fear. Fear, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> JB is different. Yeah, he's different. different. He's different. He's a little dip more diplomatic. <laughs> yeah. He is Just indeed. as effective, though. Yeah, yeah right. Just yeah. as effective, yeah. We'll have more Austin Gar right after this on the Wine and Gold Show presented by Betway. Way. Back here on the Wine and Gold Show, the legendary Richard Cavalier, Austin Carr. That, hey, that, that just means you're old. No, <laughs> not in your case. Not in your case. It does not. This is our holiday show, mm -hmm. and I asked you on the air the other day about the holidays and whether you were getting ready and your mood turned depressed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which upset me and i'm sorry that i did that so I, we were supposed to talk holidays here <laughs> and and i'm almost afraid to do it now no 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 no, no. Uh, uh, yeah, no you, i i I've, I've relaxed now the, the, I, understand, <laughs> I understand what my problem is now the holiday shopping is going better or you've planned it out you've mapped well, it out at least out. have a list now you have a list <laughs> so okay. i'm gonna start executing my list as of today okay so you, do you actually go out and buy things or you give out uh, like gift I cards? Give gift cards yeah. but i gotta go i still have to go get them though. right <laughs> yeah. so i used to try to go out and buy stuff but the, the look that i got tired of getting was <laughs> Oh hi, yeah, it's all thank right. You. I like you. Thank you, you know. But it's got half smile. That, I said, no, no. Yeah, where's no. the gift receipt? It's like, yeah. Thank you. The receipt inside. Yeah. <laughs> right. So now I give them gifts to me, and what I found out about that is they go get what they want, yeah. and they feel better about the whole situation. Plus, they always think of me because I gave gave them the opportunity to get it. So perfect. It, and my grandkids, they really don't care. <laughs> you know, they just want something that they can say I can play with. Yeah. You know, and they, they do a good job with that too. That's where I was going next. You're a proud grandpa once again. Congratulations. Yes, yes. my son is about three months old now. Uh -huh. Alex Xavier. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is uh, quite, uh, he's growing fast, man. He's like, yeah. he's growing up quick. You know, his, his diapers are getting bigger now, and everything's getting bigger. <laughs> I, I haven't gotten into changing yeah, yet. That's, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to let them handle that for a right. while. You've done that. You did You're that long enough. You're beyond that, man. You did that long enough. That's How many grandkids do you have now? Three. Three? Yep. Any of them yeah. picking up a basketball yet, or...? Yeah, my my grandson Austin, he's uh, starting to. He likes the oh, sport. Oh, you got the pressure of the he, name. He got, yeah, yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, yeah. How old? He's eight. Mm -hmm. And uh, but he loves all sports. Yeah. He can play base. He's a big baseball. I like because that was my favorite one too. But uh, he's he's a baseball player, I I think. But he likes basketball. At first, he was a little indifferent to it, and now he's starting to understand how to dribble yeah. and how to do all that. So. It's fun watching him. Fun watching him. All you gotta do is put a couple of videos of you at Notre Dame or here with the cat. Shoot him up. He'll jump into it. <laughs> you know, because usually talent, and I, I know, I know in my case, jumps a, a generation because my father is a great musician, <laughs> and we used to have all kinds of instruments at the house, and nobody, none of my, none of my yeah. brothers and sisters. But now, our, my my niece Mia is a really great musician. 
Oh, yeah. And Marcelino as well, you know, plays the piano. So my father is in heaven, just going to concerts and going to, going to watch the recital. So I hope you get a, mm -hmm. you know, like another number one pick. Yeah, from oh, your, from your third oh, generation. Boy, would that be something. Oh, well, again, I mentioned your mother and father. I want to thank him. I want to congratulate him again for 61, 61 right? 61. 61, 61 yeah. years. Wedding said, anniversary, yeah. Way to go. And they were, they were happy to, they were, they were <laughs> watch you guys, and they, you know, like, listen to me. They're like, oh, we're watching John on AC. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Ralph, I had to ask you this question. Uh-huh. During the games, they they show they 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 show you they don't show you but they that your voice is there, and sounds like you're about ready to jump off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I jump out, jump of, the out yeah. of the stage. Yeah. Second tier. <laughs> you're right, second tier. Yes, <laughs> and I, I I've been trying to to work with that because I think it's too loud. And then my wife. No, and then you're never said, too loud. Never. Lily said, no. You are loud in real life. So. <laughs> <laughs> but that happened to me against the Kings at the end of the first half. Uh -huh. Listen to my voice. I, I, hey. I don't. I don't think I was the only one going crazy in that no. last right. five minutes of right. the half. Oh man, you had eighty-one was, points to call. That was I know, but like at the, at the end, the JD triple, yeah. the alley oop to Mobley, the right. block by oh. Allen, the triple by. I mean, it was it, amazing. It was just, just they just yeah. kept coming, right? Yeah. So yes, I, I do go a little crazy, but that's why I think they put me in the third <laughs> row just in case I jump, I <laughs> land on they somebody. Land somebody. Yeah. <laughs> What's been most surprising to you, AC? The offense or the defense? We've seen those offensive explosions. <laughs> out of this team. We talked about the balance scoring. Eight players, an unheard of eight players in double figures a third of the way through the season. But a defense that last season was ranked bottom five, bottom six in the NBA mm -hmm. has been top five for about a month now. Is one right. more surprising to you than the other? You know, when I think about it, they kind of rise together because they both were horrible. And, and, and at the beginning, the defense was ahead of the offense. You could tell. But the defense kept the offense in the, in the game. Mm -hmm. And now the offense is coming along, and teams don't know who do you sit on, who do you game plan for. When you got five or six guys averaging double figures and none of them are averaging more than between 15 and 20 points, it's hard to game plan for that. And then you got Rubio coming in the game with love on it. And those two, the synergy between those two is no. really unbelievable now. The pick and roll is Their pick and roll is, is crazy. And, and actually, they, I don't want to say give it away, but they do the same thing every time, but yeah. they just can't defend <laughs> well, it. They don't video, they watch it. But I wanted to ask you about that because one of the key things that, that JB had mentioned is roles, right? And, and it yes. seems so simple and it makes so much sense. Everybody buys into the roles they're right. given, do it at the best of your ability. And everything will be wonderful. Obviously, right. it's not as it's easy, it's easier said than done. That, but my question is, how how difficult? I know you were always a starter, but right. how difficult it is for a player to accept just come his role coming off the oh, bench, yeah. even though he could be a starter, and and, and still make it work. Yeah, I went through that. I went through that because after my third knee operation, I was not the player that I had started out to be, and so I had to come off the bench. So accepting your role is probably what I would say is the biggest thing on this team now. They all have accepted their role. So what that does, that now is your focus down. So now you just focus on what you are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And that makes us stronger as a unit when everybody's focused on what they do. But it's mentally, it's tough because I had to realize, I had to go from letting the game come to me to coming right in with an effect on the game. And that's tough mentally to, to get into that. And once I got used to ready, being ready to play, which means before the game, I had to make sure that I had a, a little lather going and I was ready to go. Mm. And then before the halftime, I had to go out and, and get ready to go. Because once you come in the game off the bench, you got to come in with, with guys who are already lathered up and ready to go. You got to come in right with them. And that's why I give Rubio his, his, his propers, man. Mm -hmm. he, he's, he's, he's unbelievable. Amazing. Along, amazing. The, along the same lines, to make all of this work, there has to be selflessness, right? Yes. I mean, and when you look at the, let's look at the, you know, from top down in terms of scoring, right? Darius Garland, he says, I like the assist better than I like the points. <coughs> right. Jared Allen, I mean, nice. oh, yeah, yeah. Allen's just big team, little me. Evan Mobley, I mean, nothing right. phases this kid. Guys try to rough him up, guys right. do all that. Right. You know, the mixing and matching defenses, putting bigger players on him, smaller players on him doesn't seem to matter, right. and each one carries with them an air of, it, it's not about me, and right. that's authentic. And you can feel that right, with right. this team, can't you? Oh, yeah, that's what they're about. That's, that's them. 
And when you talk about the coaching staff, to get it, like, like you mentioned, Rafa, to, for, for uh, uh, them to get the players to buy into the role playing and the mentality mm -hmm. that they want, to be selfless. That is hard in this day and age. To get all of them to buy in. Right. You know? Because the one thing, the biggest thing that, 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 that is the biggest problem is when you win, everybody gets the accolades and you get what, what you are after individually. Mm -hmm. It's when you don't, when you come out and you try to be an individual without the team concept and you don't win, that's when one or two guys might get it. And, but, but, but we're doing it this way. It makes everybody part of the act. And I always like to give props to Stevens and Way about even we're talking about buying in, just being ready Lamar all the Stevens, time, Dean never Ray, knowing right. if you're gonna if your number is gonna be called. Mm -hmm. Stevens' number got called against Miami. Did a wonderful job bringing in the energy. So again, the coaching staff doing a great job selling the, the yes, plan, right. and the and the players doing a great job. I call it a, a, a one taxi squad. Right? Yeah, when right. we go out, it's just one taxi taking everybody home. So <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm, I, I, you run out of things to say about what's happening here right. in, in Cleveland, and, and the fans have done a wonderful job as well. Oh, of course. They sense the energy yes. and they're bringing this it building's been, that, This building's been electric. Yeah. Right? That is important. That is important because we used to use the crowd <laughs> I mean, a, as a weapon, because mm -hmm. we all we want to do is get out there and jump on you right they away. They fight with the guys, and they just go, mm -hmm. and the crowd just brings it, man. And now you're starting to feel that it's almost like they're waiting for something to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and when that happens, you have the crowd right where you, where they want to be responsive. The Cavs number one in terms of plus minus in the first quarter this season, so mm -hmm. they have jumped all over teams. They have used that energy. You know, th before we let you go, AC, the one thing JB has said since taking over. We can control two things, be the most unselfish team on the floor and be the team that hustles the most on the floor. And mm -hmm. I would argue, AC, that in just about every single game, each and every one this season, the Cavs have been the most aggressive team and the most unselfish team on the floor. Would you agree or disagree? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's who they are. Mm -hmm. That's what they have, they're have. morphing into right. is that. And to me, that's the best, the best possible variable you can have as a team is to have be unselfish and, and sharing in the wealth and, and not worrying about because think about it nightly going out there nightly if you have to depend on LeBron James all the time then you can game plan for that because that's one guy that's going to be in situations that you can game plan for but when you have well you know you might get a lob to uh, uh, Allen they might not get the lob this time because uh, Darius is going to hit the shot and then you might come down, the lobs out there, and they pass to the corner, and <laughs> Mark and hits the shot. I mean, there's just so many different. And now that Okoro mm. is giving them plus minutes, woo, buddy. And then you turn him loose on something. When he's hitting, when his offense is going, and you turn him loose on somebody, whew, Bradley Bill don't want to mm. see him much more. Yeah. He's worn him out twice. <laughs> as, as Zach Levine. How about, yeah, Zach, right. how about Duncan Robinson? Yeah, right up, oh, and, yeah, down, yes, right right. up and down the list. So, uh, I mean, it's all. So far, so good. You're right. all coming together. Uh, thank you for joining us. Oh, oh, always a pleasure. pleasure. I, I never get to see you, so thanks for <laughs> spending a little extra time with I'll us. I'll see you next <laughs> yeah. 18 hours. <laughs> happy holiday to you, all Same your loved you. ones, all the grandbabies. And to all the Cavs well. fans, happy Ice holidays. Ice cream for Senor Cavalier for Christmas, please. <laughs> <laughs> All I want for Christmas is a little ice cream, little ice cream. <laughs>
Lucy, terrific to see you. Nice to see you. Formerly of the computer team. Formerly of the computer yeah. team. <laughs> and now of the yeah. renowned community relations team. Yeah. It is the season of giving. And mm -hmm. the season of giving with this organization has been a big deal for a long time. Mm -hmm. Presented by Oswald. Mm -hmm. Could you fill us in on what's going on this It's It's always great stuff. So yeah. fill us in on what's going on this season, this year, this version of the season of giving. Sure, so it's been a very busy season of giving mm -hmm. presented by Oswald. I'll let you know what we've been up to in the community. So we tipped off everything in November, right around Thanksgiving. We had a our turkey giveaway at Boys Hope, Girls Hope, which is a organization that provides at-risk young people with support, what they need to get through to be a thriving adult. So we were there serving 100 families. We had all the fixings and turkeys to give away to the families. We had three players there. We had Evan Mobley, Lamar Stevens, and Isaac Okoro. So that was an awesome event that we had over on the east side. And then December came fast and furious, mm -hmm. so we had a yeah. lot going on in December. Right, as always. As always, yes. So in December, we have our toy drive that started November 24th, it actually runs through the 15th. So we've been collecting toys at all home games. Right. We've collected so far hundreds of toys, which are gonna be matched by the Cavaliers Community Foundation. Nice. And those are gonna be distributed to the community in a few ways. We're having a toy drive party at the end of uh, the month. And then I'll tell you about that more in a second. And we're also gonna give toys away to other nonprofits um, in Cleveland. And by the way, do they? When, when's the last time that they get to buy? On, could we have a wish list on Amazon.com as well? We do. Correct? If you yeah. cannot bring the toy, or if you haven't been lucky to be at the field house, you can actually help as well, but on, on online, right? Exactly. If you go to calves.com slash toy drive, that's where our wish list is, and that's where you can find where to buy a toy. Excellent. Yeah. So what else? Yeah. So we also had our TMVP Week of Service. Right. TMVP stands for Team Member Volunteer Program. So we had a season of giving edition. We went to four places um, the week of December 6th. We started off with, Rafa was there. We went to Habitat for Humanity <laughs> Restore. Sure, that was wonderful. Do you want to tell us what it you did? It was great. You know what it is? I, first of all, I didn't even know, the, the I didn't even know about the store. Yeah. And Dave Dombrowski, our, our, our head of broadcasting, mm -hmm. our boss, was with me. And it is, it's a store. It's like a mini Home Depot. And they get donations from all kinds of people. Right. And it, it really sells a lot of good stuff at great mm -hmm. prices, right? And what we did was we set up all their Christmas decorations and get their shelves ready for sale. And, and what they do from that money, they collect, they build the homes for Habitat for Humanity. So it's like the money just keeps on giving. Yeah, that's great stuff. And we spent four hours, Dave Dombrowski continued to, for four hours, build Christmas trees. And the, fin the moment he finished, and they were going out, they were, they were going out the door. So it was, it was great. It was yeah. amazing. Four hours well spent helping the community. And, and, and now I'm going to go shopping at the store. Yeah, it's a great resource. Mm -hmm. yeah. They've got a lot of good stuff. Lucy, you're new on the community relations side. You've been with this team for a number of years. New on the community relations side. What, what stands out to you in terms of working with the players and their willingness to want to do this. I think that they feel the same way that we do, that mm -hmm. this is really something special that they enjoy, right? Totally. I think even when I was on digital and I mm -hmm. was on digital doing social media for nine seasons, yeah. that it was most exciting to cover the players at these events because they really care. They love giving back. It warms their heart. It warms the hearts of those that they engage with. So I think it's been so fun being on the other side now on the community relations team planning these events right. where they're coming to and just seeing that same level of care and understanding so it's been really awesome and lucy before we let you go what else is there for those who who want to volunteer for those who want to donate uh, how can they sure. do sure so? so i think we still have our toy drive going on as you have mentioned mm -hmm. already so donating to our amazon wish list would be important mm -hmm. um the only other thing that is exciting is our end of year cavaliers winter wonderland which is happening on the 23rd here at rock mortgage field house we're going to be giving away all of our toys to project act they're a local nonprofit, and we're helping them with supporting their youth. So we'll be giving away all the toys. We'll be feeding them. They're gonna go to the Monsters game. They're gonna get a little photo booth opportunity. It'll be an exciting way to wrap up Season of Giving. Can I come Oswald. to that? I'll be, I'll be in town. He's inviting yeah. himself. He's inviting come himself. On. No, 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 I this, come on in, help. In this no, case, in this case it's nice. Okay, I'll right. stay for the Monsters Normally game. Normally invites himself. But, but I want to yeah. help. I think that sounds yeah. amazing. Yeah. Dude, the, I'm into the face it. of a kid when he yeah. or she gets a present, that's it. Yeah, we're both in. Yeah, sounds Come good. Come on over. Yeah, we We'd will love be to here. have you. December 23rd, right? Yeah. Yep. Lucy, so good to see you. Good to see Thanks you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. More of the Wine and Gold Show right after this. Thank you, Lucy.
love basketball because it gives you as much as you give it. So you put the work in and you see yourself getting better. So that's the best part about being a basketball player. I would say fans because, you know, they're the ones who, who are making even, uh, this game even better. You know, with them, we're even stronger. Allen, ho oh, ho, the exclamation point! What I love most about basketball is there's always an opportunity to improve and just learn about the sport. So the fact that you can get better every day. So, I mean, like, whether it be film, uh, whether it be mentally, uh, physically, you can work on your body, but it's just an amazing game that you, know, you can come in every day and get better at something. Why do I love basketball? Um, I, love, I love just the beauty of the game, um, the, the competition, I love the, the, the grit and the toughness you have to play with, and also the IQ of the game, the, the, the strategy, the thinking part of the game is, is big for me. It's fun just compete against other great talents and then just bring in talent to one team is really fun and uh, just buying in and just collectively winning games and having fun on the floor together. For Mobley. Yes, sir. Basketball has done so much for me, um, made me travel around the world, uh, now I'm in the NBA. Um, it just brought me closer to so many other people that I wouldn't have been. I love basketball because I love to compete. It's something that my dad, he put a basketball in my hand when I was three years old. And ever since then, I always had a love for it. And always wanted to be the best I can be. Uh, I want to be the best Colin Sexton. Sexton now. You know, it's, it's in my bones. It's in our blood. You know, obviously my dad being a coach, uh, it was something that we grew up on. Uh, you know, ever since I can remember, it was going to practices, it was going to games, and it was an opportunity for our family to come together and be around one another. So, uh, you know, from childhood memories uh, of us being together and spending time as a family and rooting for one another, uh, that's the first thing that I can remember. And it's given me that love, and hopefully I'm passing that same feeling on to my kids. It is a likable bunch this season, isn't All it? All of them. All of them. <clears throat> it's, it's been refreshing. You know, Jetty Osmond says, why does he like basketball? The fans the fans are liking this version of the Cavaliers. Yeah. I'm telling you, the field house has been amazing <laughs> yeah. this season. It's been and, fun. And the, fact, the thing that I love the most is that it has been natural. It is, there's nothing recorded. There's nothing. They sense nothing the, forced, right. the, 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 the effort in, in a unit. They sense that the greatness that we're watching. They sense what we're building here. And obviously, they, they, they've been with us since this whole process started. So they actually seen the fruits with us. And, and it, I think it's incredible to see how the fans have been this season. I agree. And it makes it even better, I think, coming off of last season when we had either an empty building or a partially empty building. And now everybody's back in full force. And they're getting rewarded for it. Yeah. I mean, it's just been a joy to watch this team play through the first 29 games of the season. Again, we talked about the rough schedule, and nothing seems to bother these guys. And you can't – if you think back on the first 29 games, there's not a single game where you say, mm, they just didn't have it tonight. You know what I mean? And throughout the course of an 82-game season – Which is a season, normal thing. You're going to have that a handful of times no matter what kind of team you have, whether you're at the top of the standings, at the bottom of the standings. Mm -hmm. You know, fingers crossed, so far so good. We haven't seen that one time this year. But again, it goes back to everything that, that J.B. Bickerstaff put on the table from the beginning of training camp. You know, that we're going to be a competitive team, that we're going to do what we do best, and we're just going to go out there and compete. It's not going to work every night, right? The shots sometimes don't go in. I mean, the other day against Miami, we started like one for seven to start the game, and still we were lucky that on our defensive side, we were also forcing Miami to bad shots. So we have been competitive. It is something, one of the one of the core values that JB gave the guys, and I think it's amazing what JB planned, and it's also amazing the fact that the guys have also buy, bought into it and executed. But my question to you is, why do you love basketball? Why do I love basketball? The fans, it starts with when Jetty said that, that resonated to me. Yeah. There's something about being in that building and feeling that energy, and there's also something special about what we get to do, you know, to be able to enhance people's enjoyment of the game at home, you know, watching their TVs, listening on the radio. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's a big, that's big to me. That's important to me. That's special to me. That's something that I've always enjoyed about this profession to be able to help people unwind after they worked hard all day. Now they want to sit back and relax a little bit and we, we can have a, just a small part in helping folks to do that. I think it's incredible. I love it because out of all the sports I work, it's the only one that I played. And, of course, not even close at the level that I've been working it. But I get to understand it and feel and understand maybe a little more the greatness that I witnessed.
not just from our side, but something, you know, because there are players, there are great players everywhere. So just the fact that I get to understand a little bit more than just the preparation I have to do for boxing or UFC or football, the fact that I play basketball, it, it makes it, it makes it a lot more enjoyable. Yeah, the special year continues. This is our holiday show. We'll be back to wrap things up right after this. Back to close up shop on the Wine and Gold Show. I think it's worth noting before we say goodbye, a huge milestone taking place tonight. Mike Snyder, Cavaliers Radio Network, broadcast number 2,500 tonight. Unreal. He's hosting the pregame and the postgame show. He does such a wonderful job. 2,500 tonight for Mike Snyder. Is there ever a definition of radio person? Is, is Mike Snyder? And not only... Uh, for people that don't know him, obviously, everybody... I like that picture. Yeah, that's, that's looks nice. looks more like Dave Dombrowski than, than Mike Snyder. <laughs> but I, I, at the beginning, when I came to Cleveland, I thought they made a mistake at the booth. But uh, again, Mike not only has done 2,500 games with the, with the Cavs, but he has been the voice of all Cleveland teams at one point or another. So I call him the sport, the voice of Cleveland sports, Mr. Mike Snyder. Yeah, he's special. What, what, what's important to me, what is special to me, is that when you can say that one of the best broadcasters there is in the game is an even better human, human and yeah. that that defines Mike Snyder who Congrats. the second I, I got here with this organization he welcomed my family and I in with open arms and that's something that, that resonates to this day Mike awesome stuff here's to uh, 2,500 more Woo. for the great Mike Snyder this has been the wine and gold show presented by Betway happy holidays everybody